Some breaking news this Tuesday afternoon, Rob Gronkowski is coming out of retirement to play for Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm Sierra Goodwill here with Evan Lazar and Mike Petralia. Guys, some shocking news. Gronk obviously coming out of retirement is a shocker in itself, but then saying he's only playing if it's for Tom Brady. The details of the deal, Patriots are sending Bucks. Gronk and a seventh round pick, and in return, getting a fourth round pick in the upcoming draft. Do you think this was a fair deal? Well, I think it was the only deal that the Patriots could really make. You know, when this news first trickled out, a lot of people on Twitter are going on there saying, oh, the Patriots hold all the cards in this deal. Not really. I mean, the Patriots had held none of the cards in this deal. Gronkowski currently is retired by the NFL league standard. He has filed retirement papers. If he unfiles those retirement papers, he automatically counts against the Patriots' salary cap. They have no cap space to absorb that cap hit. So they had to make this trade happen if Gronkowski was going to plan on coming back to football period so the Patriots got a free fourth round pick out of this which is going to equate to essentially a low fourth high fifth rounder when you consider the pick swap that is going on so in a way they got nothing something for nothing right because they're not going to have Rob Gronkowski play for the team anyway in 2020 but all the talks about swapping first rounders or getting OJ Howard out of this deal none of that was ever going to happen because the Bucks really held all the cards here. No question. I couldn't agree more with pretty much Evan, what uh, Evan just said on, on every single point. Um, look, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are not about to uh, send you a, one of the three or four best, mo most productive tight ends, young tight ends in the NFL for a tight end who may play one more year. Uh, and then eventually retire again, maybe he plays two more years. But Rob Gronkowski, as much as he is uh, in his late 20s, is at the very end of his career. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers obviously want to appease Tom Brady. This is a big part of their team building process. This is a great way for Tampa Bay to say, hey, look, Tom, we've got your back. We want to show you that not only – uh, did we have players on board uh, who uh, here who could help us? But we're willing to bring in a guy and get creative like uh, your former teammate, Rob Gronkowski, who you have some familiarity with. The other thing that I think is important to understand here is this gives Tom Brady that familiarity to make him just that bit, uh, a little bit more comfortable in new surroundings. I also think – go ahead, Sierra. I was just going to say the premise of Gronk – coming out of retirement itself, were you surprised by it? Because obviously we know that he's dropped a lot of weight in recent months and over the past year, although reports are saying that he has been working to put this back on because these talks about coming out of retirement have been going on for weeks now, just obviously we're just finding out about it. But how do you think he's going, is he going to have the legs? Is he going to have the weight, the strength to be effective this season for the Bucks? Well, that's exactly where I was going anyway, Sierra. I think the fascinating point of this entire thing is that Rob Gronkowski was not done with football. He was done with the New England Patriots. You know, as soon as Tom Brady moved on from the Patriots and went to Tampa Bay, that obviously opened up this door for Gronkowski to then come out of retirement and play elsewhere. So it was clear. And even when the Patriots almost traded him to Detroit prior to the 2019 season, it was clear that Gronk's allegiance was to Tom Brady, not to the New England Patriots. So he he only wanted Brady to be his quarterback, but he didn't really care about where that was, whether it was in Tampa or in New England. Whether Gronk has anything left in the tank, oh, well, his last two games in New England, the AFC Championship game and the Super Bowl, were two of his best games of that 2019 season. He obviously had the big catch in the Super Bowl that put them over the top to beat the Los Angeles Rams. So is he going to have a ton left in the tank? Is he still the all-pro guy? I think we know from 2019 that some weeks it will be there, some weeks it won't be there that's sort of what we saw from that season with him but the year off the rejuvenation that he gets out of that it's going to be fascinating to see if he can ramp it back up for an entire year or if we're going to just see flashes in and out of the old Rob Gronkowski like we did in 2019 or 2018 excuse me the other benefit I think guys that uh, Gronk gets out of all of this is 
he's going to be going up against a lot of defenders who are going to have the adversity of what we're all going through, and that is the uh, quarantine that uh, all NFL players are under. Sure, a lot of these NFL players and other elite athletes and other sports are trying to keep themselves as conditioned as much as possible, but understand that if we're looking at some type of shortened, very, very shortened uh, offseason, it's going to take a lot more for these uh, players who would be defending Gronk to get up to speed. And I think that really uh, works to Gronk's advantage. I, I would assume, based on the pictures I've seen of him on Twitter, that Gronk is in very good shape. And uh, look, I mean, I think, you know, he's still young enough to the point where he can get up to speed. His body, like Evan said, is going to be much more rejuvenated than just having a couple of weeks off or even half a season off. He's going to have a full year plus of time away from the game of football to really be revitalized. And I think that's going to pay off at, at least at the start of Gronk's return. Another interesting angle of this too is that CBD products and marijuana is no longer a part of the collective bargaining testing program for the NFL. So the NFL is not actively testing players for marijuana products, which means that Gronkowski can, t- can continue to take his CBD medic product that has supposedly helped him out tremendously with his body and with his pain management throughout the entire 2020 season. So I think a combination of the new CBA passing and having this new rule that marijuana is not on the no longer on the banned substance list for an automatic suspension or automatic placement into the program and top of that Brady leaving the Patriots it just opened up this door wide open for Gronk. I also think guys something that we should talk about and bring up at least briefly on the on the surface is how this impacts the Patriots draft uh, value in their stock. They don't have a second rounder but now all of a sudden they have an extra fourth rounder and I think that could be uh, very pivotal in terms of how the Patriots choose to roster build. I, look, I think this is a gift from above for the Patriots to get an extra fourth rounder in exchange for uh, a guy that was in retirement and obviously a seventh round pick, which wouldn't have that much value to begin with, I, I don't think, to the Patriots. It would be like an undrafted free agent. Yeah, when you package together a third round pick with now your bonus fourth round pick, now you can move up into the second round on the trade value chart that works out to increasing your draft stock from, let's say, 87 to maybe 15 picks higher than that. So you can use that extra fourth rounder as basically a free trade chip now to go up and bridge that gap from 23 to 87 that we've discussed over the last couple of months. And the- Polar opposite off seasons for the Tampa Bay Bucks and the New England Patriots. Obviously, Bucks fans are pretty excited right now, and it's been fairly lackluster on the Patriots. And a lot of talk on social media after the Gronk trade is how Julian Edelman must be feeling right now. Maybe a little FOMO on his part because right now it's Edelman and who else on offense from this dynasty? James White, but it's. It's Edelman and Slim Pickens. looking at his, his friends from afar. Uh, yeah, I think the biggest thing, too, is going back to the point that Gronkowski clearly was more retired from the Patriots than he was retired from professional football. So what does that just say about the organizational standard right now with the veteran players? Not so much with guys that they're drafting or not saying that Bill Belichick's lost control of the locker room or anything like that, but he clearly lost control of two of his biggest stars in Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski, at least in terms of where they're going to be playing football next season. Well, and I'd I'd also interject here. I think everybody in the locker room and I think everybody in the building, uh, front office and the coaching staff led by Bill Belichick, knew full well of the relationship between Gronk and Brady, like we brought up at the very beginning, like you brought up at the very beginning, Evan. Um, They are tight, uh, tied at the hip. And this comes as a shock, I think, to nobody. Uh, I don't think it comes as a shock to Julian Edelman. He probably laughed and went, oh, God, you know, you know, Gronk and Brady together again. And, you know, I'm sure he wors- wishes them well. Um, maybe there's a little FOMO Sierra there, uh, fear of missing out. But, you know, I think uh, at this stage of his career, Julian Edelman and others understand the dynamic between Gronk and Brady. Well, for all the rest of our Patriots content, head to our website at clnsmedia.com and check out our YouTube channel at Patriots Press Pass.